Another year has gone by and it's Thanksgiving time again, a time that doesn't particularly lend itself well to a show about sour tea, but uh, since we haven't thoroughly run out of ideas enough to just start throwing turkey into a blender, uh, I've got a couple other ideas instead. We're going to start with some pumpkin apple punch, some spiced figs, we've got beets, something I'm going to call hot corn, and then we'll be remaking a couple things from last year, hopefully with improvements. And that'll be our cranberry sauce and our maple carrots. And just as per tradition, we're going to start with some alcohol just so that we have a little bit more fun doing this. Uh, we're going to start with our punch. To start, I've got 30 grams of some pumpkin puree that I've made. And I'm going to add 70 grams of apple juice to that. 20 grams of a white rum, in this case, Plantation 3 year. plus 11 grams of a simple syrup. And then we're just gonna to top this off with kombucha. Normally with alcohol, it's gonna delay the fermentation time by at least two to three days. But then uh, when there's pulp in there, like we've got with our pumpkin, it's going to shorten the fermentation time by a couple days because we don't want it to volcano out. So I'm gonna let this sit for four days ultimately while we carbonate. And that's bottle number one. Next up, I haven't tried these before in a kombucha. They are much wetter than I thought, uh, but these are figs. And they smell exactly like a Fig Newton, which does make sense. Uh, I'm gonna use 34 grams of these and I'm gonna dice them up. I'm gonna throw them into a blender. By dicing these up and blending them, we'll expose more of the surface area to the kombucha and that'll let more of the flavor steep out of it. I'm going to blend this with enough kombucha just so that it all comes together. I'm also going to throw two peppercorns, two cloves, both whole, and then I'm going to add two grams of my homemade vanilla extract. That's bottle number two. And for this one, just since there is so much pulp, we're gonna let it sit in the fridge, let that flavor steep out, then we're going to strain it, top it off, and then carbonate it. Otherwise, all of our carbonation is gonna shoot out, and then we're gonna have a flat drink, which no one wants. Not on Thanksgiving. Next up, we've got an old kombucha favorite, uh, and that's beet juice. I'm planning to add about 90 grams of beet juice, but from what I've heard, that flavor can really overwhelm the kombucha easily. It's about 10 times as much as anyone else recommends using. So I'm going to start with 45. We'll see how it tastes. I get a little bit of that earthiness, and it is quite sweet, but uh, I juiced them, so I'm gonna use them. I'm gonna throw 10 grams of lime juice in with it. And I was expecting to add simple syrup, but uh, we'll see where this is at. Yeah, uh, I'll add 12 grams of simple syrup. This one just carbonates for three days. It is blood red. Next up, I thought to myself, what's a good fall vegetable? And I came up with corn. And I thought, what pairs well with corn? Jalapenos and lime. So perhaps not a traditional Thanksgiving feast, but uh, we'll see how it tastes. I've got some corn that I've browned in the oven along with some jalapeno slices. This was 90 grams of corn before I roasted it and 20 grams of jalapenos with the seeds, I should add. This one may have been an error. Um, I'm gonna add another 10 grams of lime juice plus 17 grams of simple syrup just because the jalapenos and the corn are both something like two to 4% sugar. 
you know, we don't want this to taste ridiculous. That's our very chunky bottle number four. And this is another one with enough pulp that we're going to have to let it sit in the fridge first, and then we'll strain it out and fix it up. Mm. Next up is our cranberry sauce. And last year we really did make a sauce and we made it properly. It was pretty good. It just didn't work very well in a kombucha. Cranberry flavor wasn't really there. And then there was also just a lot of the grit from the skin of the cranberry that got through. Uh, it wasn't very pleasant. It wasn't offensive. It just wasn't very memorable. And last time I vowed to just use cranberry juice in the future. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to use 70 grams of it. To that, I'll add 30 grams of orange juice. I'm going to add 10 grams of simple syrup just to balance out some of that acidity. And since we're just using fruit juice, this is another one that's only going to get three days of carbonation. No need to strain. And then finally, last year, we made maple glazed carrots on the stovetop. And it just kind of tasted like raw carrot and nothing else. So this year we're going to try out something else. In our previous episode here, we were testing out different ways to get the baked roasted flavor into our kombucha. And we think we kind of found a way. So we're going to test that out now. I've got mostly baked carrot, but I've also got some baked chips in there too. Should hopefully give a little bit of that deeper roasted flavor, but uh, still let you know that you're drinking a carrot. Which I guess is what we're after here. Uh, this was 150 grams before I roasted it. What I did not roast is the maple syrup because I don't think that would really add too much to it. And then we'd probably lose most of that syrup to the pan. This time I'm adding 17 grams of it. It smells smells like a soup. And I don't mean that in any way that could be construed as positive. This is another one that's going to get a time out in the fridge uh, before we strain it. Uh, and I will meet you back here once these are all ready to drink. Welcome back and happy Thanksgiving everyone. We're going to start with our pumpkin apple punch. That looks like too much carbonation. It smells quite interesting. It smells like apple and rum. That's actually really good. You get the apple, you get the pumpkin, you get a little note of the rum, but not too much. There's a lot of carbonation. There's a lot of sweetness, but it's kind of balanced. Yeah, I have no complaints about this one. There's definitely a lot of pumpkin sludge there at the bottom, but uh, overall, I would say it's a pretty perfect fall drink. And this one I would make again, and I can't really think of any changes I would make, so it's a pretty rare thing to hear me say. Next up, we've got our spiced fig. Oh, God. I was going to say not as much carbonation as the apple, but... Uh, once more, I am wrong. It smells very spiced. You can definitely pick up a lot of that clove. Way too sweet. Uh, and it tastes like potpourri. I don't even really get the fig that much. It's, I mean, it's there, but it's kind of buried in the background. I don't get any black pepper. It's just kind of, it's very sour, very sweet. And then it's clove. I think once I've kind of like deadened my taste to the clove, I can pick out more of the fig, but it's too spiced. I don't think I should have used any clove at all. And I suppose less of the fig as well if it's this sweet, because that was where all of our sugar was coming from. Not bad. It's just I didn't want a clove drink. I wanted a fig drink. Uh, I think I need to dial that back a lot. Next up, we've got our beets, which I swear to God, people swear by this. Uh oh. What a mess. I did drink the rest of the beet juice afterwards. 
just on its own with some lime and I think I added a little bit of apple juice. It wasn't that good. It smells very much like beets. It's got a very earthy, sweet sort of smell. My one complaint about just drinking the beet juice by itself outside of a kombucha was that it was very kind of heavy and cloying and sweet. It just like sticks to your mouth like syrup. So I thought some effervescence would kind of lighten it up, which it kind of did that, but it also made it more aromatic. So you get more of that earthy aroma. And to be less subtle about it, I don't think that makes it better. I think this does need a bit more acid to it as well. It's a little more sweet than sour. And I think this needs more sour just to keep this as light as possible. I'm not sure about that because there is a good amount of acid. There is a good amount of sweetness. There is a lot of carbonation. It still just feels like so cloying and syrupy. And that earthy dirt smell does not help. It's not bad. I can definitely drink it all. It's just not better than other things you could drink. And it might have stained my glass. Next up, we've got our hot corn. All of these have had a pretty good pop to them. Don't know why I would have poured so much. I'd say I am apprehensive about drinking this, just having smelled it before. It smells like corn. Ooh, it is not bad. I'm gonna try and walk you through it. It smells like corn up front, which is not good. It, it just kind of smells like a pile of corn. But when you drink it, it's very sweet. It's got a lot of richness. It's got none of that just corn cob smell to it. And then it just goes from carbonated to spicy. Kind of just burns down the throat, but it's not too spicy. It's not that overwhelming. It goes away pretty quick. It's just kind of you go from the tip of your tongue carbonation down to spice, just kind of rolls down you like a wave. Overall, very pleasant. Perfect balance, I would say, of sweet and sour, lots of carbonation, a good punch of heat. I like all of this. This was probably the one I was, mo no, it's not the one I'm most concerned about. That one's next. But I was still not looking forward to drinking this, but... Uh, after that apple punch, this might be my favorite. That one's wild. Next up is not the one that worried me. This one is just our cranberry sauce. And how could this be bad? There was like chunks of stuff in here, which I can't imagine why, because I only used pure juice. good. It's just not distinctly anything at all. It's not distinctly cranberry. It's not distinctly, there's no hint of orange. I think maybe if we used less sugar and if we use some of the orange zest instead of orange juice, a little bit more cranberry juice perhaps, not that bitterness, that specific cranberry flavor stand out. I think that would be better overall. It's good. It's just I wanted cranberry sauce and for another Thanksgiving, it has eluded me. Still kind of feel the burn from that hot corn. That one at least didn't disappoint me. Yeah, it's good. It's good. And then finally we have the kombucha that I thought smelled like soup, our maple carrot. Oh, that's bad looking. Okay. Smells a little bit better than it did. There's a lot of roasted notes, a lot of that rich maple syrup sort of flavor. Oh, let's give it a try. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Uh, there's like a thousand different roasted notes that just kind of swirl around. It's too sweet. There's not really a trace of acidity there. I don't even know if I'm picking up carbonation. 
it's like a hundred things coming at you at once. It's, it's kind of hard to decipher here. And it just, it smells and tastes so rich. It's so, it's like dark caramel. I'm not getting any notes of raw carrot though. It's all very roasted. It's definitely a thousand percent better than the roasted maple carrots we made last year. Because that just kind of tasted like raw carrot juice. There are so many different like roasted dark notes that it is really interesting. I just don't think it's in balance enough for me to appreciate all of them. I think less sweetness, let some of that acidity come through, and then you can just enjoy that depth of flavor. Because as it is, it's just punching you from all sides, and it's kind of a lot. Surprisingly not bad. It's just for one of our more savory options here today, I think it's swinging too far sweet. If we could fix that, though, I think this would be a very, very interesting drink. I don't know why. I think just roasting that carrot for so long. And that's probably why that corn and jalapeno is so interesting as well. I feel like adding those roasted notes because of our roasted episode last week, which I thought would be really boring, but I think it's helped us out a lot here because that's adding a lot of depth, a lot of dimension, a lot of new interesting flavors to it. Flavors I wouldn't have expected and flavors that I think are greatly improved over our last Thanksgiving. Overall, I think that apple pumpkin punch was probably my favorite. It's just a very traditional, easy crowd pleaser, I think. Uh, it's not really straying outside the lines of what we would normally do. But then that corn and jalapeno was, I don't know, I'm a big fan. I would not ever have expected that, but uh, that was delicious. There was a lot of depth there. There was a lot of interesting new flavors. And then this and the beets, I think, could be great. Well, I don't know about those beets, but this I think has a lot of potential. The figs, I think I would really have to go back to the drawing board on. The cranberry, I think I've got some ideas. The beets, I think we would just have to get the beet flavor out of there and that would really help. <sighs> but if you have any other fall ideas for kombucha, please let me know. Otherwise, thank you for watching. This is Reckless Booch.